How are we doing, everybody? Uh, today, what we're going to do is we're going to do another review of solving multi-step equations. So we're going to solve equations with, at minimum, three steps. Uh, so this is, again, just a review of what we've already done, just to get your mind set and figure out how we're going to solve these equations. So first thing what we're going to do is we have to identify where our variable is, what side of the equation is it on. So we draw this vertical line, and we've been doing this in class uh, to make sure that we focus on one side or the other, the left or the right side. And what I see is this vertical line actually represents my equal sign. So I'm going to drop in my equal sign just below just to show that is the, pretty much the fulcrum of my balance. That's the center of my balance of my equation here. And in this case, what I see in this equation, I see, you know what, I have a negative 12k right here. I know it's a negative 12k because the sign in front of it tells me it's negative. And I'm looking also on that side to focus, do I have any other variables over there? What can I actually do first? In this case, I do have another k, which this is a negative 3k. I'm going to box off the negative sign with it because, again, this is combining our like terms. So this is just a review again. We've already covered this, but we need to just rehash it and make sure we have this pretty solid. And with combining like terms, we've always talked about we have two negatives here. And if they are those same signs, we're going to actually add those. So we're going to add 12 and 3 together to get 15, more specifically 15k because of the variable. And because they're both negative, it is actually a negative 15k. So same signs there, we're going to add and keep those signs, or those terms rather. The positive 12 is not a like term with the 15k, so I can just drop that down and write in that this is negative 15k plus 12 is equal to, and then the 72, we don't even have to worry about that right now, so we can drop that right in. So what we've been doing, and if my pen would write, that'd be fantastic. There we go. Uh, so what we've been doing is focusing one thing at a time. So step one was combine the like terms. Step two now, we have combined our like terms to make that a negative 15k. So now what we have to do is we have to get our negative 15k alone, meaning we have to make this positive 12 a zero by subtracting that 12. And what I'm doing to one side, I must do exactly the same to the other side, so I must subtract that 12 again. And this is why this little vertical line actually helps me see, am I subtracting 12 from both sides? Well, I have it on the left side, I have it on the right side, I am doing that correctly, so now it's simple math. We know 12 minus 12 is 0, so this negative 15k is going to drop right in because negative 15k plus 0 is 0. Is that negative 15k? Not 0. And lastly, I have 72 minus 12, which is? 60. Last step in this case, all we need to get, we have our negative 15k alone, so that means we have to make it a 1k by dividing by negative 15 to both sides of this equation. And we know negative 15 divided by negative 15 is 1, so we have that 1k mission accomplished. And now it's just 60 divided by a negative 15, which we know our answer is already negative because of the one negative sign. And 60 divided by 15 is 4, so k equals negative 4. Down below, now I'm going to check. So I'm going to take that negative 4, substitute it in for k. So where I see that k, that's going to become a negative 4. So I'm using parentheses in here. I'm rewriting every other term exactly as it looks. I'm using parentheses to show that I am substituting in there. Now I know that this is negative 12 times negative 4, which is a positive 48, because a negative times a negative is a positive. The plus 12 doesn't change in the middle here, because I have multiplication again. An order of operations says I have to multiply before I add. So negative 3 times negative 4 is positive 12. And now addition, subtraction, I do left to right. So I take 48 plus 12, which is 60, plus another 12. And I know 60 plus 12 is 72. That is equal to 72, so this answer is correct up here. Second example, now this is another review. In this case, identify where your variable is, and I'm going to draw that vertical line right here to show that equal sign. And in this case, I notice my variable's on the left, and it's inside parentheses up here. M is, this is actually a 2m minus 8 inside parentheses, and then you have the 4 on the outside, which we know, or we should know, that in this case, we're going to need to distribute that 4. So in this case, when we're distributing, that means we are multiplying. So we're taking 4 and multiplying it by 2m, which is 8m. I'm just going to drop that down in there. And then 4 times, this is a negative 8, because I have to take the sign with it. And we know 4 times negative 8 is negative 32. The 28 is just going to drop down as well, because we did not change that side at all. 
And now again, I'm looking, where's my variable? Left side, right side. In this case, we have it here on the right side. So that means we need to get this 8m alone, meaning we have to add 32 to that negative 32. And to the other side, we're going to add 32 as well. Now, in this case, I get negative 32 plus 32 is 0. So I did get 8m alone, which is nice. And now 32 plus 28, we get a positive 60. So now what we're going to do is we have to actually find this 1m. So again, we divide both sides in this case by 8 to get that 1, because we know 8 divided by 8 is 1. So we did get 1m, which is nice. And now I made this intentional because we know off the top of our head 60 cannot equally divide by 8. It just it's not going to happen. We're going to get a decimal or fraction answer. Uh, now, either are okay. So we have two options. We could either option A, take this as an improper fraction and make it a lot simpler for us, or B, we could just straight on divide it and figure out what 60 divided by 8 actually is. I'm going to do it both ways. So the first way that I think is easier is I find a greatest common factor between 60 and 8, which I know off the top of my head, just from doing the last problem as well, is I can divide top and bottom by 4 because 60 divided by 4 is 15, and then 8 divided by 4 is 2, and I could leave this as 15 over 2. Or, if I know anything about these fractions here, I can continue and divide 15 by 2, which is actually 7 and a half. Both answers are the exact same thing, and we can make this, if we wanted to, we could write it as a mixed number. We could write it, and again, we could use the decimal form, 7.5. All are okay. I think for this case, though, for our purposes, these two answers make a lot more sense. I'm going to show you why in the check then. Before I do this check very quickly, ladies and gentlemen, your uh, code word today is substitution, just like the substitution property or the replacement property, which is what we're using to actually substitute in for all these variables right now. So I'm using my check, and I'm probably going to use, I like either of these two answers. Both are really nice and easy for me to use. I'll, I'll do both of them. Uh, the first one is with the 15 over 2, I actually like better in this case because we're going to take this 2 and multiply it by 15 over 2 and then subtract 8 inside these parentheses. The nice thing that we know is we can write 2 over 1 and then when I'm multiplying these fractions, I look to see can I cross reduce anything? Well, I have 2 and 2. They share the same factor of 2. 2 divides by 2 and makes it 1. So therefore, 28 is equal to 4 times, inside this parenthesis, 1 times 15 is 15, and then minus 8. That to me, to me, that's a lot easier. Some of you may prefer the 7.5, which I'm okay with that too. If you're using calculator, however you want to do that, I'm all right with that. So again, we have 28, and that's equal to, again, order of operations, parentheses first, 4 times 15 minus 8 is 7, and 28 equals, 4 times 7 is 28. So the 15 over 2, that checks out. If I'm doing it with 7.5, same steps. But this time, 28 is equal to 4 times 2 times 7.5. And then we're going to subtract that 8 in the parentheses. So again, 28 doesn't change because that is just our left-hand side. We have 4 and then 2 times 7.5. A lot of times you can think about if you have $7.50 and you get another $7.50, you have $15. So 2 times 7.5 7 is 15, and then subtract 8, and now we're back to the same situation that we had before. So I could solve that all the way out if I wanted to, or I could just leave it as is uh, and trust that these are going to be the same thing. Okay? So both answers will check out. All right? So what do you have to do now? Get into the, the Google form that was sent to you through Classroom and get going on those problems. Okay? Good luck.